Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the social network graph. Now, this visual is quite nice for being able to show a, a basically a people graph, a graph of different people that you have that you're associated with or that you want to display some kind of association or relationship with. So it allows you to look at maybe something like your LinkedIn network or your Facebook network and be able to see how people have relationships to each other. I'm going to be just showing a little bit of a different example today. You could do in a different example of your own. Maybe you want to show something with inside your organization and how folks relate to each other with inside of an organization, which is kind of what you're seeing on the right hand side here. The largest element in the middle, the guy in the middle, that's actually the CEO in this case. And then you can have the people that are branched off directly from him are his direct reports. And then anyone below that you can see are connected to those direct reports. Now, you can also bring in images. You can see here the images need to be located in a URL location. So as long as the URL is an image, you can bring it in and use it as part of the social network graph very easily. It's actually a very simple visual to use. The one thing I did find that is that uh, might be a little bit time consuming is setting up your data in the proper way to be used in here. So I will show you how my data is set up so you can kind of use it as a reference guide whenever you're trying to use the social network graph. All right, so let's go ahead and walk you through how you can use the social network graph in our scenario today. All right, so in this example, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're not going to be looking at Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn or anything like that. What we're going to be doing is I am a big NFL football fan. And so what I'd like to do is I want to follow the coaches in the NFL, and specifically one coach, to follow the coaching tree that is below him. So basically what that means is there's a coach, Bill Parcells. He was, he was a big uh, coach in the, the late 80s, 90s, and even a little bit of the 2000s. And based on the people that coached under him that were coordinators and assistant coaches, they all, because of how well he did, they all found their own jobs. A lot of them did. And then in some cases, the people that were under them found the jobs as well as head coaches. And so what I want to do is I want to be able to display a coaching tree where it has the coach Bill Parcells at the top, and then all the people that were coaches, coaches underneath him that got their own uh, head coaching jobs as well. And uh, so we're going to be looking at a data set here called Coaching Tree. And I'm going to go pull in my data to get started here. We're going to go pull in from an Excel file. And the file we're going to be using here is going to be called Coaching Tree. And I'll hit Open. And I think the spreadsheet here is called Bill Parcells. That's the name of the head coach that we're focused in on. And you can kind of get a peek at what the data looks like. So Bill Parcells is our top area here. I'll, I'll full screen this for a moment. Bill Parcells is the top of our tree. And then we have people like Bill Belichick, Sean Payton, Tom Coughlin, Tony Sperano. We have all these people that coached underneath Bill Parcells. And then from there, we have people that uh, Bill Parcells was the head coach of, ended up finding their own jobs as well. So people like Josh McDaniel, Daniels, Eric Mangini, Romeo Cornell, they all worked underneath Bill Parcells, and he kind of created his own coaching tree underneath him as well. Same with Tom Coughlin here. There's several underneath him. And so what I would like to do is I want to see how well these coaches did that started from Bill Parcells and ended up working their way down through other coaching trees as well. And I want to be able to bring in things like the total number of wins that they have and really take a look at this data. So I'm going to go ahead and hit load to bring this into our Power BI data model. And if we wanted to, we could go hit the data sheet here, the data view to see what the data looks like. Again, you can see we have a couple fields in here that have the image. I have the image of the individual. I have an image of the predecessor. So whoever that individual is, who the predecessor of that individual is. And you can see there's several blanks here because there is no predecessor to Bill Parcells. He's at the top of the, the, the link here. He's at the top of the, the food chain. Then I also have in here the number of wins. So how much each individual coaching coach won is underneath total wins. And then how much their predecessor won is underneath predecessor wins. So you always need to have basically two columns, kind of like your current column and then who the predecessor was, what their value was. Okay. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to go back over to the report view here, and I'm going to go up to the uh, custom visual section here. And we'll say we want to bring in a custom visual from the store. And from the store, we're going to just type in the word social, and we should be able to find the visual that we're interested in here rather quickly. There we go, social network graph. And I'll click add to bring this into the Power BI visualization pane over here. And tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and make this fairly large, at least, uh, let's say, about half the screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to plot out the fields from our field list into this data visualization. And there's quite a few fields that we can use. Some of them are optional. Some of them are not. Uh, but let's walk you through how we will do this. So in this scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the predecessor name as our source name here. So I'll find the predecessor name, which is right here. It's kind of falling off the screen. You can expand this a little bit if you want to, but I know this is the one. So I'll select predecessor name and drop that underneath the source. 
So the source is always going to be the predecessor. The target is always going to be the individual that we're talking about. So I would bring the name, that's the individual, underneath the target. So you start with the predecessor as the source. You go to the individual as the target. Then I would do the same thing here. So I would bring in the predecessor URL for the source URL. So I have a predecessor image right here. And then I have the target is going to be just the regular image. And you can see as I do this, it builds out all these images for each of our coaches. Then I can actually control the size of each of these bubbles by affecting the size field here. And so what I can do is I can tell it that I want the predecessor wins to be our source size. Okay, so you can see the source size there. And then I want the number of wins, the total wins by individual to be the target size. You can see it's kind of affecting the size of each of these here as I do that. Then next, I'll bring in something like the, the coaching tree. So what this will allow me to do is I can actually color code these so that each of them get color coded based on the new coaching trees that are created off the original. And so what I can do is I can bring in the predecessor tree as the source color, and then I can bring in the coach tree, that's the individual, underneath the target color. And then as I do that, you can see what happens here is it builds out these different, different color coded sections here for me, where I can see all the ones that are related to Bill Belichick here are colored in this green color. All the ones that are uh, Sean Payton, which is just him by himself, all the ones are in red. And then all the ones are Tony Sperano or kind of this darker color. And then all the ones that are Tom Coughlin related are in this yellow color. And you can move things around here if you want to kind of reorganize them. You'll notice they have kind of a bouncing effect to them. They can get kind of knotted up. You can simply kind of move them and shift them away from that. And as you resize this, it also resizes with it. So if I resize this and make the entire visual smaller, you, you will see that the whole visual kind of resizes with it as well. Okay? You can also hover above any one of these values. So if I really wanted to see, well, wow, Bill Belichick looks like he has a lot of wins. He has the hard, largest size bubble. You can hover above each of these, and you can see exactly how many wins he had, which in this case is 247. Okay? So he's kind of created his own coaching tree here based off of his own success, but it was really originated from Bill Parcells here. So Bill Parcells is the main person, and then all the people that came off of him appear below. All right. Now I can also interact this with other visuals as well. If I wanted to, I could bring in something like a slicer. So maybe I bring in something like the coaching tree here, and then I bring in a slicer visual and maybe increase the size of that a little bit so we can read it a little better, like so. And then what I can do now is I can select the values that I want to choose here to, you know, filter this down better. So I can select something like uh, Sperano, and you can see here's just the coaching tree between him. I can select uh, Belichick tree, and I can see it started with Parcells, but I can see it kind of filtered off based on the other individuals here as well. So this is the Parcells tree that's created, but it's originated from, I'm sorry, this is the Belichick tree that's created, but it's originated from Parcells. I could select the Coughlin one here, and I can see Tom Coughlin is the head of this one, even though it originated. The lineage comes from Bill Parcells here. But here's the coaches that came off of him. Interesting, this one has a house. I guess maybe this was a, a news story when he was moving from a, one, one team to another. And then there's also the individuals. So I can see the individuals here as well displayed. And if I want to see them all, I just uncheck that, and I can see all of them here again. So it's a really nice little visual. It's very interesting how you can integrate with it. Let's take a few moments and look at some of the format uh, options that you have as well. If I select the visual, and I work my way over to the format paintbrush. You'll see there's two sections here that are devoted to this particular visual. You'll find underneath the links section, you can actually increase the width of the lines that you see that are linking each of the nodes together. So I can actually increase the width of that if I wanted to. I can bump that up to, say, 5. And then you'll notice that the width of the links has now increased in size a little bit. So you can control a little bit of that there if you wanted to. You could also change the color. So if I wanted to, maybe I can make them all red or make them all maybe more of a pure black. I can do that and you can adjust the colors as you see fit. You can also change the nodes. So the nodes are the circles. If I go underneath the node section here, I can increase the border around each of the nodes. Right now it's set to five. I could set it to something like eight, and it just increases the border size around each of them here as you see. And it kind of resets every time you do that, so you might have to shift things around a little bit if you wanted to. You can, of course, always do this focus mode and see a full screen view of this if you wanted to as well. All right, let me send that back to where it was. You can also change the color of the borders, but keep in mind, we're actually using a category to change the colors of these on our own. So uh, if you didn't have any kind of category that you wanted to use to change the color, you could change the color manually by going underneath the border color section here. here. Okay, so you have that as an option as well. Uh, if we go back over the field list, I want to point out there are a few fields I did not use in this example. You'll see there's an option here that says extra info for the source and extra info for the target. Those are for the tooltip. You might have noticed when you hover above a value, you see this little tooltip that pops up. That tooltip 
Uh, you can add other fields too. So you can actually drop other fields in the source or the target info, and it adds additional information in the tooltip. That's all those do. So it gives you a few other things that you can look at, makes it a little more interesting to interact with, and allows you to pass in more information. So that's really it for the social media graph. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's a really cool visual. It's nice and bouncy, interactive. You can play with it. You can really see how it can work with other values that you have. I like the interaction that you have whenever you're filtering. I think that is a really effective way to use this tool. Uh, but that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the social network graph and look forward to showing you our next visual and our next module.